All right, welcome back, guys. Um, we're going to do an episode about Jen's new addiction. New? <laughs> it's been a two-year addiction. It's a two... Well, she's been addicted for two years. Uh, I guess I'm the reason why she has this new addiction, because... I originally went, I think it was two Christmases ago, yeah. I said, I'm going to go find her a new board game because I, kn well, I know you liked Nightmare. I, I do. That I'm cool for when it says we see <laughs> I and nightmare. I thought there was another nightmare game. And I thought there was too. But you had them all. I have them all. But she has them all. Yeah. So in the process of researching and trying to find this other nightmare game that doesn't exist, I ended up stumbling across this board game called Mansions of Madness. When I first got the game and I opened it up and we played it Christmas night. We tried to play it Christmas night. I got so frustrated. I was like, I'm gonna need to learn this more. Yeah. So we're not even going to go on a journey of trying to teach you guys this game because no. there are fantastic tutorials on YouTube. Yep. Check them out. Maybe you can put a couple in the link. <laughs> I'll put a couple in the uh, description. description. Today we're just gonna talk about my acquisition of these games and why I think everyone should give it a shot. First off, this is the second edition. The first edition um, came out as a two to five player game. But what the second edition did that really opened this up for more people is that it can now be played one to five players. Meaning, if you have Steam, you just get this on your Steam account and you can play interactively with the computer. You don't need a second player. I fear not only for myself, but for the entire world. I know now that a malign force is gathering and must be stopped. What I don't know is how. So that made it so that you can just play this by yourself. It is fun it to play. It kind of acts like the Dungeon Master if you were to say yes. it was comparable to uh, yeah. Dungeons and Dragons. And more than you can play more than one character. So if you wanted to, <laughs> you could play yeah. two people. Now, sometimes you would get into a bit of an issue with that depending on the scenario you play. Yes, because we played, me and you, we played as four players. Yes. But then when we played as groups, because your characters can, you can get conditions like you be, can become insane. Dennis became insane and his character had to isolate one of us in a room by ourselves and he had to have a bladed weapon and in those certain conditions he killed that person. It happened to be me. Yeah. And he was the only one that won the game. He was the only one that won the game. So. Uh. There are times when you'll run into situations yeah. like that, that if you play a dual character, it won't be the best play. But there's a whole little dictionary of rules that comes with this game, and every other expansion to this game has there's its own little base set of rules. This is the one to five player game, and I love it, and it started the addiction. Start off with this one. Learn it after yes. probably a few, maybe three playthroughs. Yeah. You start to feel comfortable with it. If you love it, I'm assuming you're going to go after the all expansions. the expansions. There's also two or three DLCs yeah. yep. that you don't even need an expansion for. You can play it yep. from this one. You can play this game 20 times and and uh, have a different game every, every time. Every time. The, it's not a typical board, it's tiles. And the tiles are two-sided and depending on what scenario you pick, it depends on how the ma uh, the board is laid out. Exactly. And it opens up as you play it. Like it's like if you were playing a video game and it was Metroidvania style, then you click on something and it opens up another yeah. section of the board. This game also uh, didn't come with a placemat. And what I did right off the bat was I made a little placemat and we'll show that in picture form. Um, I need to expand upon the placemat that I made to place the cards on. Ye oh, yeah. Because we've added more, more cards based on the expansions you yeah. get. So now 
my placemat it's not big enough i even laminated it i made a whole background for it based yeah. on mansion we may have to do something more because the decks have gotten so much thicker we may have to do something where they're kind of standing up but leaning back if you uh enjoy your board game staying in uh, good condition like i do we put sleeves on them and that just makes them twice as hard to stay in one little stack yeah because that makes your deck a deck slide. that's this thick that thick yeah and then they're very slippery this is the base uh second edition i want to show you guys my newest acquisition which is the first uh edition of the game so this is is the side by side mm -hmm. comparison of the first edition and the second, second edition. edition and what are the differences the main difference is that this is two to five players mm -hmm. this is one to five players okay. this one also has the monsters i do believe and the heroes yes for reoccurring nightmares and suppressed memories that came with your first edition there this is kind of a workaround if you can't get those two because they are very they are very hard to find because they are out of print mm -hmm. and they're they're not printing anymore you will notice let's talk about this one first yeah this one is still sealed and i don't think it's going to be unsealed i got very lucky and found this one at a local gamezilla we stopped in i thought i checked to see if there's any mansions of madness they had this one i was like oh cool one I don't have yet. Not realizing they are extremely rare to find. I thought this one was hard to get. This one's harder to get. I spent $60 plus tax on this one. I think there was even a 10% off the retail. They had a bit of a sale. I do know that opened with all the pieces still there in good condition. They go about six to $700 Canadian. Can you imagine $600 for a board game? Yeah, it's but it's almost impossible to find. Yep. It was a happy birthday gift yeah. along with Resident Evil 2 and... Flowers and candy. Flowers and candy. I just got spoiled. It's one of those things when you come down to your game room and you see it on the shelf, Yeah. it makes you happy. Oh my God. You yeah. building that wall for me, I was just gonna i was super content with the idea of you putting your games all in there and you're like what if i make a wall for you to yep. display all your mansions of madness and i was like well don't worry about me like just <clears throat> put your games on there i love it it makes me happy every time i see it it looks great it does look great and i have the complete second run complete set you've had many playthroughs where you've had four or five people Oh, and yeah. it's just been a blast. Like yep. one of my favorite times was the the gameplay where we're on the boat. Yeah. And on the boat, yes. the scenario on the boat is like you're start you're starting the game. You're on the bottom deck of the boat. It starts to sink. It starts so to sink. So you spring a big leak, and then you gotta clear the f tiles out, searching for you know you have search tokens and all this. You have a certain amount of turns, and then the app is like, then you lose. That part of the boat. That part of the boat. It's unaccessible. Sunk. So if your character's on that part of the boat, guess you what? Die. You're dead. You're dead. So it was, it was crazy. It was, it was awesome. We we made it all the way up. I <laughs> think it was three or four uh, different floors. Yeah, and there's and a And they just boat. kept sinking. They kept sinking, and we were on the top deck at that point. And then the boat starts to tilt, and then you're losing tiles off the back end of the board. Yeah. And uh, we were at the point where, well, we have to search this, but and we couldn't figure out because we knew there was somebody that was the bad guy, and if we had to let them on the boat, he was gonna kill us all on the on the uh, on rescue, the rescue boat. boat. And as the tiles were dropping off and the boat sinking, Dennis was searching something. And it was either, a, I think it was like a 10 year old kid or something like that, which was like throwing me off. And I was like, oh, I, something strange about that character. Or it was Dennis because he, he decided to go search something. And it was like, no, get to the life. And boat. what ended up happening at the end is he was one turn away or like just, just a couple numbers off the roll of the dice to get on the to boat. Get on the boat. And then the next turn, the boat sank. In we the all next died. Mythos phase, yeah, it, we, we all, all died. died. And it turned out Dennis wasn't a bad guy, but we no. were prepared to leave him. I was ass. ready to leave him. Phil wouldn't leave him. 
Phil wouldn't leave him. I was totally ready to let him drown. I was going to let him drown? Um, but I think the kid was on the boat with us. Yeah. So we might have died And anyway. we still don't know who the bad guy was, because that's the beauty of the game. The game you just don't can get to keep know. Keep playing, keep playing. Like, I don't know how many times you've had to play through different oh. scenarios to predict something. I don't we... think you can go wrong with a Fantasy Flight game. Yeah, the, this awesome. is Fantasy Flight. Uh, this is Horrific Journeys. Um, I think the newest one, and I'll get it off the shelf, is called Path of the Serpent. I think that's the very newest expansion they came out with. Yeah. So these are all the same size. We're gonna have more games than what we can fit on the table. <laughs> Here I am trying to be tall. So, Path of the Serpent, Streets of Arkham. And then we have Beyond the Threshold and Sanctum of Twilight. See, when you say Beyond the Threshold, I feel like I know it. Because when you put the app on, there's yeah. a creepy music, there's different sound effects, and of course I have the, the surround sound in the room, and it just fills the room with this eerie music, and it sets the atmosphere. Oh yeah. And then, you know, it makes, us doing this video makes me want to have the guys all over it again. It makes me want to play it again. Yeah, I want to play it again. I want to have Phil, I want to have Dennis, and get Mike over here, yep. we can all play. Yeah. It would be all, yeah. It's, it's an awesome game. It's an awesome game. Uh, we're definitely going to have to have a night of mansions. I think so. Yeah. Um, now that I can have the complete one and we can pick wanna, whatever scenario we want. I know. I want to brag about myself a little bit. Yeah. Because during pandemic time there, and I was stuck in the house <coughs> for a month, I painted some of your figures for you. You did. This one's called the Formless Spawn. And you can't appreciate the detail from here, but we're going to take some pictures of the amount of detail I and time I put into painting this for her. It's all hand painted, obviously. Oh, yeah. Between these two, these two are my favorite. Yeah, you did a great and, job. And uh, yeah, I And you painted I really, a lot of the, um, really I, I guess you would call them heroes or like players. I characters. did. I painted at least a half a dozen of them or so. Uh, if became, not more. If not more. I want to paint them all eventually. Yeah. Um, and that... But it's a lot of time. That like, makes your... This figure probably took me three hours. Oh, yeah. And so. it makes your collection go up exponentially. Really? Oh, my God. If you are trying to sell the base game with all the painted figures, people are asking hundreds more than what that... I mean, if you were to, uh, to take into account how much time it takes to paint the figures... Yeah. I would like to uh, put a clear coat... On yes. top of this. Yes, I think that would be a really good you idea. You could probably do the entire thing, the base and everything. Yeah. Clear coat. Just take kind the card of protects out. everything. Take the card out. But it would save the paint job. It would for save sure. the paint job. I uh, like this one here. There's got to be at least five different paint colors in here. Oh like yeah. Teeth and flesh and veins, veins, eyes, and, eyes and everything there. And yeah. I, I I like it. I really you really can't really appreciate like. this one until you get up close. And then oh, this yeah, one here looks good, probably even from afar because there's two different shades of red with white, with white teeth and all that. And then you can't get, um, you get up closer and then you start to see the green eyes and stuff like that and the claws and, yes. and like there's little details that I'm like, oh geez, oh yeah, that looks really cool up close. I tried to value what the collection. Had, have you evaluated it? <clears throat> I've taken a bit of an evaluation. And I think it's somewhere in the range for the complete set of uh, probably between twelve and fifteen hundred dollars. <laughs> I didn't pay that much. No, no, no. Not no. quite that much. No, but, but yeah, we've gotten money invested in it. That's my Mansions of Madness collection, and it makes me very happy. So now I understand why people need to spend that much on a video game, because I spent that much and then some on a game, on a board game. It's. It's a hobby and an, an addiction at the same oh, time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. So, but you can spend that much money on worse things. Absolutely. So. And it's always, I, I think it'll retain its value. I would say so. Yeah. Yeah. It's a really cool game. All right, guys. Until next time, board game on. Board game and on. Board game on. <laughs>